You should hopefully be somewhere around here. If I quickly go to look dev mode, your objects should look something like this anyway. So what I'm going to do is go across to the shading workspace and that puts me into look dev mode up here and I've got my shader editor down the bottom here. So let's just briefly look at the lamp to start off with in terms of objects. What you'll also want is the material tab down the bottom here. So I'll click on that. And at the moment I have my lamp selected and that has two shaders on it. So it's got a material, which is the emission. So it's got an emission and a metallic material. So I'll click on the metal first. You can see that that's all the way up to metal. The roughness is up slightly and the color is gray. And those are the only things that I've changed in the principled BSDF shader. But I've also got this object, which is an emission, which is this face just here. So what I'm going to do is just quickly go through that again. So I'm going to delete this shader here by pressing the minus sign just over here. You can only do that in object mode, it's worth saying, which I'm in at the moment. Now let's go into edit mode with tab on my keyboard and select the faces. So that's three on my keyboard or up here and select that face. Now I'm finding it difficult to see what I've selected because I haven't got my overlays turned on. So there's my overlays on and I can see the face. What might be helpful is if I bring out a new screen. So I'm going to click on the corner here. Can you see where my cursor changes to the crosshairs right in the corner there? Click, left click and drag. And then I've got a new window and this window I can change to solid mode just here. You can move across your menus with middle mouse button. So I've got overlays turned on here and I can turn them off over here and see what my render is going to look like. I'm also going to change this to rendered mode so we can see the final result of our scene. Your lighting and background might look very slightly different to this, so don't worry. We're going to change all that in a moment. I'm going to add the emission to my light up here. So let's add a material and it's created a new material slot. And to add an actual material to that slot, I can click here or here. I'll just click there. I'm going to label this one this time. Emission, and that's a yellow emission. So I have to create an emission in here or down here if I like. Let's go to the bottom of the principled BSDF and you can see there's an emission option there. I can click on that, push it all the way up to the top and now we have an emission, but it's not showing. And that's because I haven't assigned my emission to that face. So with that face selected, let's just make sure it's selected in our solid mode area. Yes, it is. We can click assign and you can see immediately it changes there. I did say I was going to give this a slight yellow color, so I'll change that color there. You'll also notice that it's not giving off any actual emission, so there's no light coming from it. It looks like a light because it's bright, but it's not emitting light. That's because if I change to our render tab just here, we are in, if I go to the top, EV. An EV render engine, as I've said before, kind of fakes things. So the lighting isn't quite real. If I change this to cycles, you can see that there's light being emitted from this face now because it's an actual emission. There's also from the torch as well, which has an emission on that surface as well. But if I change back to Eevee, you can see that neither of them emit. It's also worth saying, so if I zoom out just a touch, that this isn't the only way to add an emission. And the emission down here, it's difficult to change its value above one. But if I press Shift A to add shader, emission shader, I get this emission just here. And if I plug that into the surface, not much has changed at the moment, but I can change the strength just here. Again, nothing changing in our scene, but if I go across the cycles, you can see the emission is having more of an effect or less of an effect, depending on the number here. So if you're in cycles, you can use an emission node. However, in Eevee, because your objects don't actually emit any light, you can just use the principled one. So I'll change back to Eevee and I can delete this emission node. So what I'm going to do to fake it, I need to actually put a light underneath my lamp. So let's go to object mode, much easier on this side, object mode with tab and shift right click where I want to put the light and that places the 3D cursor. But remember, it doesn't always stick to where you want it to. So if I actually click on the object, shift right click, it will be on the object and then I can move it across more easily. So shift A to add and then light. So we're gonna use a spotlight and you can see it pointing down this way. You can see that arrow there 
and there's the cone. I'll just move it across slightly, so G, then X, and move it into the middle. So you can see your axes across the top here, and somewhere around there. And now I want to go to the lighting settings down here, where I can change the settings for that light. So at the moment it's only 10 watts, which is very low. If I change this to something like 1000, now we can see the effects of the light in our rendered viewport. There's a few other settings which are useful. I'll first talk about the radius. If I turn that up, you can see that circle moving in the middle here. Now the point behind this is, if I have the radius low, and I press G then Z and move it inside my lamppost, I'll bring the radius even lower actually, you can see suddenly it disappears because it's hitting the lamppost and there's no way of it to get out. However, if I increase the radius, then I can have my lamp inside my lamppost, but the radius is where it starts emitting from, and can you see it's starting to shine just there. The other useful options is the size, so if I change the size of the cone to somewhere like there, and you can click and drag on these numbers, or you can click and type in. The blend is the other thing that's nice, and I can just ease the blend so it fades in nicely here. So let's add a light to the front of the torch here. So shift right click on the actual torch. So let's go find the torch, click on the torch, press full stop to zoom in, and there's my cursor just there. So shift right click to move that cursor and on an object to make it stick to it. Shift A, and we'll add another spotlight. And it's pointing downwards. Now look at the axes, which axis do we want to rotate round? The X axis. So R to rotate, X, and we want to go minus 90. So we're going backwards up this way, so minus 90. I type that in and press enter. So R, X, minus 90, and we've got our spotlight. I'm going to move this one inside the torch, so the cone is the right size, somewhere around there and increase the radius. So look in the viewport over here and see when it's having an effect, although it's not bright enough at the moment. So we need to change it to something like a thousand as well. And that's fine. Let's bring up the blend and the size as well. Size is somewhere around there, looking at these edges here. And I'm getting a lot of flicker in my viewport for some reason. It might be my screen recording software. So this is good, but we're not seeing the full effects of our light, I feel like, because we've got this grey background. So how can we change the background? Well, at the moment, if I click on objects, you can see the materials changing down here for each object that I click on. But I've also got a world selection as well. So there's object at the moment and world. We'll change to the world, and you should see something like this. So you should have a grey background, and the strength should be 1. So what I want to do is I can either change the color of this, so it gets much darker, or I can change the strength as well to something like 0.1. And I want to give it a slight blue color, somewhere around there. Now it's very dark at the moment, maybe just a touch brighter, somewhere around there, 0.2. I might change this later. So we can hardly see our people at the moment. Maybe I need to change the street lamp brightness. I need to give some emission to the eyes as well. But also what will help me is maybe a moonlight, so a big light that's coming across here, or this way, either way, that's going to be our moonlight. Because nighttime scenes aren't always completely black, in fact they rarely are, especially in film. They have some sort of blue light to represent moonlight. So let's go to our solid mode over here. I'll shift right click over here, so that's where our light is going to go, and shift A to add light and we're going to choose a sunlight this time so a sunlight which is pointing straight down so it's going to have sunlight that just streams down in that direction i'll change the direction by clicking on this yellow dot here and you can see those shadows having an effect so let's go across to the material tab with my light selected and i want to give it a blue color so it mimics nighttime and we're starting to get the right look now and you can rotate this as you like. Maybe it's a bit flat that way. A bit of angle on our shadows would be nice. And maybe a bit lower. Long shadows. 
I can also press R to rotate by the Z axis, R then Z, and I can rotate it around like that, which in many ways is a bit easier. So R to get longer shadows. So lastly, the eyes, I'll click on one of the eyes and press full stop on my numpad to zoom into that and shift right click to get my 3D cursor on the eye, shift A to add light. And this time, rather than the spotlight, we'll use a point light. Point lights are like the spotlight, but they don't have a cone. They emit light in all directions. So I'll just come around here and G to grab and pull it out the front there slightly. And you can see the effect that's having. I obviously want to change the color of this point light to red to match the eyes. And then it looks like the eyes, if I press full stop on my numpad, are emitting light. Let's copy that across. Shift D to duplicate, Shift D, and then the X axis. So Shift D, then X, and move it across. And now I have two emissions from there. And you can change the wattage as you like. So now we've got all our lights. I think it would be a good idea to group them all together so we can hide them if we need to. And in fact, it'd be a good idea to start organizing our scene a bit because it's looking a bit confusing. So let's click on all our lights and press M to move to collection. So M is move to collection. I'm going to create a new collection there and call these lights and press OK. Now in my outliner, if I bring this down a bit so we can see it, there's my outliner and I scroll up you can see my lights, all my lights there are in a lighting collection and I can minimize this. I can hide the lights and you can see them hidden from the viewport and therefore they don't have an effect. And then I've got this render tab just here. So that means they won't be rendered. If you don't see that render tab, this little camera, you've got the filters up here. So I've got selection, visible in viewport and rendered turned on. So you might have to click on that camera. That way I can see what's going to be rendered or not by clicking that and what's in my viewport or not by clicking that and you can see the effects down here. So I'm going to do that for each of my objects. I'm going to put the monster into a collection, the man into a collection and the street with the street lamp into a collection. So the monster so I'll hide my lights for the moment, click on my monster and select the two eyes, M to move to collection, new collection, monster. And press OK. And there's my monster with my objects inside. I'll hide that. I'll do the street next. So the lamp and the pavement and the street. M to move to collection, new collection, street. And press OK. And then I'll hide that. And then just the man, I can box select all of him. M to move to collection, new collection, man. And press OK. Now I can bring these all back. And it's much easier to organize my scene. So the last thing we want to do is the fog and then think about our render settings. So in the world output once again, which is down the bottom here. And remember you have to click on world over here. I can add some volume to it. So if I press shift A to add, shader, principled volume. I can then bring this across over here. I can then add that to the volume and you see the results there. Now it's very dense, so we can't see anything. So I'm going to change the density to 0 0.01, see what that looks like. And you can see now we've got a bit of volume. If for any reason you don't see the volume, you'll need to make sure that volumetrics is ticked in your render settings. But I will go through that shortly. At this point, I can bring the strength of my background down a bit more. So there's nothing coming from my background now. So this is just the background fog, which is white, but it's being affected by the sun lamp. So we can start to see some of these emissions. And at this point, you'll want to go in and start clicking on your lights, changing the power of your lights. So let's change this to 2000 and just see what that looks like. And we can see more effect from it now. And with more density, you may need more emission from your lights. And we're starting to get close to the initial scene. 
Now it's worth noting that I'm just plugging this straight into the world, which gives everything that volume. I'm just going to disconnect that for now. And I'm going to add a big cube in the middle. So Shift A to add cube. And I'll just resize that over everything. I'll go to top view to make it easier. Seven on my numpad. Scale in the Y. Scale in the X. And we're roughly there. Now if I go to object shading over here, add a new, disconnect the principled BSDF, and Shift A, shader, principled volume, and plug that into the volume of this material, you can see the effects that it's having. Bring that density down to point 0.1 again. And now that's just affected this area, which kind of helps slightly because because we've got this black background and we can kind of see more what's going on in our little scene. So you can create areas of fog with a big cube like this if you want to. In this case, because the whole scene is being lit up with fog, it doesn't make too much difference. What I'm going to do is press M to move this to a new collection and type in fog. So I have the option if I want to use that fog or not, but I'm going to stop it being rendered and take it out of our viewport so it doesn't get distracting. Go back to our world settings and plug the volume back in. And you can really see the difference that it makes. I'll just use the world one for now because I think that's a little bit simpler to understand, but you are able to use objects as fog volumes. And remember to change your object tab here to see them. So I've got a density of 0.1 on this one, but my world tab has a density of 0 0.01, and I'm kind of liking the effect here, so I might put the density up. But let's hide that fog from the viewport for now and use the fog in the world. So I can just push that up. So 0 0.05 maybe, somewhere around there. 0 0.03, and just play with it a bit until you get something you like. And also you'll want to be playing with your lights, particularly the sun lamp up here, the sun just there. And we can change the color of this. And that will affect the color of our fog. So lastly, let's take a quick look at render settings. I do have a separate video on this, which I'll link in the description. But just very briefly, I'll move in just a touch to our scene. Ambient occlusion is useful. It creates shadows where objects touch each other. So you can see in there if I turn it off and on. It's not easy to see with the fog turned on. I'll just turn that off for the moment. So I'll just disconnect it from the world and ambient occlusion on and off. Again, with this sort of lighting, it's not making a huge amount of difference, but usually you have to turn the distance up quite a lot. Let's put the volume back in. Bloom is something that you'll probably want to use in this case. So giving a bit of brightness to the eyes and the emissions. You have your threshold, which is how much will be bloomed. <laughs> so the brightness of the objects, they have to be very bright in order to be hit by the bloom or affected by the bloom. This way, they don't have to be very bright and they're affected by the bloom. So you can see the fog now is even being affected by the bloom and everything. So somewhere around there where we've got the lamp or the two lamps having some bloom. The other thing you'll probably want to turn on is screen space reflections. You can see that that created a reflection on my street. So I'll turn that off and on and you can see the effects there. The other thing you might want to play with is the volumetrics. I've got mine set to four pixels. The lower the pixels, the slower the render time, but the better the result. And volumetric lighting and volumetric shadows. You can see what they do for yourself. Volumetric lighting is turned on by default, but volumetric shadows should create shadows in your volumes. If I turn the density up slightly, you can start to see those shadows coming across. Like I've said, I'll go through this in more detail if you want to find out more in the tutorial in the description. The last thing for us to do is to set up our camera. So our camera is currently here, and if we look through the camera, it's just pointing at the monster's bum. And to look through the camera, we press zero on our numpad. If I press N now, I can go to view over here. A little bit tricky to see. So I'll pull out this for now. And lock camera to view. If you tick that, you can move your camera around like it's your viewport. Now I do have a separate video for camera turnarounds and I'll put that in the description 
and you'll be able to rotate your camera around your objects. But for now, let's see what this is going to look like. So if I press F12, or I can go to render up the top here and render image, we can see what that's going to look like. And that's our current scene. And you can save your image at the top left under image. And your final scene should look very similar to this just here. So you might want to tweak a few settings, set up your camera in an interesting position, and then render. And a great idea is to join the Discord server and show off your work there. Or put a comment below with your results. So that brings us to the end of this series. If you have any thoughts or ideas for extensions of this, then do comment below and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing your creations.